1851, the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts of St. Louis began placing flags on 150,000 graves at Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery. So we are going to continue that tradition here at Fort Meade today. Den leader Jim Strange from Fort Meade's Cub Scout PAC 377 continuing a Memorial Day tradition. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. With Memorial Day behind us and summer in front, we'll check in at Outdoor Recreation and preview this year's Red, White and Blue celebration. These stories and more, but first, as is our custom with so much road work going on around Fort Meade, periodically we like to take a look at the status of some of the major projects going on. Let's start with Rockenbach Gate. After a lengthy delay, work resumed in April with an estimated completion date of March 2021. A project closer to completion is the stretch of Maryland 175 from Disney Road to Reese Road. Construction is 79% complete and on schedule, and it should be done by December of this year. Maryland 175 from Reese to Mapes is also nearing completion. It's 81% complete and should be finished by August. Meanwhile, the access control point at Reese Road is being rebid. Once construction starts, it should take about 18 months to finish. And finally, the interchange at 175 and Maryland 295 is looking at a target date of July 2021 for completion. Meanwhile, Anne Arundel County Public Schools is accepting applications for openings on the Citizen Advisory Committee. The committee is a 30-member panel that provides input and advice on education issues throughout the county. The panel consists of two representatives from each of the 12 high school clusters, one representative from the elementary schools and one from the secondary schools, two at-large representatives, a military representative, and three others appointed by other parent groups. Members serve two-year terms with an option for a third. Applications are due by June 17th. Go to aacpsschools.org for more information. Meanwhile, with the summer season upon us, things are getting busy over at Outdoor Recreation. Every year at this time, Me TV checks in to see what's new. Here in Outdoor Recreation, though, we mostly have a lot to do with the equipment rental uh, process, and we have many new items that have been replaced. A whole new set of dunk tanks that just came in, which are nice. Uh, we have a lot of new travel trailers. Uh, we have uh, new boats coming in as well, a new ski boat, which we're kind of excited to get um, probably in a few more months, and some also some newer fishing upgraded fishing boats as well. Um, we have, uh, we're looking for some new campers, uh, some bigger ones than what we already have now, which are largest like a pop-up camper, uh, but maybe a, a stand-up inside type of camper that'll be getting either this year or next year. So we have lots of new equipment coming in place that's gonna be exciting for everybody to, to use. Work, it says Outdoor Rec is also getting two new boats, including one geared for water sports. The two new boats coming in for the fishing boats are, are actually steering wheel style side console boats. The one we have now is just a steer behind. Uh, it's got a lot more features that are built into the boat than just a basic boat. Um, the bigger one we're getting is a 22 foot ski boat. Uh, it's going to have a 150 horsepower uh, motor on it. Great for water skiing. It's going to hold about nine people. It's got a steering wheel on top of it. Uh, bimini top. It's got all nice little features of uh, something new. Outdoor Rec rents an exhaustive list of equipment and items to enjoy the summer season. For a full list and rental prices, go to their website at me.armymwr.com. In more NWR news, Fort Meade's annual Red, White & Blue celebration of the nation's independence is coming up Friday, June 28th, starting at 4 p.m. on McLaughlin Parade Field. Live music starts with the School of Rock from 4 to 5, followed by the Maryland Army National Guard Band from 5 to 7, and the Jukebox Heroes wraps up the musical entertainment from 7 to 9.30. A change this year, the kids' rides require the purchase of a ride-and-play all-day wristband. If you get yours in advance at Leisure Travel Services, it's $5. It's $8 on the day of the event. Fireworks round out the day at 9.30 p.m. The Red, White, and Blue celebration is open to the public. For more information, once again, go to me.armymwr.com. And finally, on this edition, the 780th Military Intelligence Brigade and the Fort Meade Equal Opportunity Office invite you to this year's LGBT Pride Month observance. It's coming up Thursday, June 20th at 1130 at Club Meade. This year's guest speaker is Ashley Broadway Mack from the Modern Military Association of America. In addition, the Equal Opportunity Office invites the community to submit original artwork or photos capturing this year's theme, More Than Rainbows, Military Pride Service. Contest entries need to be submitted to your unit Equal Opportunity Advisor by June 14th. Winners will be recognized at the observance on the 20th. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week. The power of one small action, one conversation, or one phone call can make a difference in the life of a veteran going through a difficult time. For free 24-7 confidential support, call the Veterans Crisis Line or the Military Crisis Line.